Hey, everybody. This is Pastor Dan, ready to help facilitate another high five under five minutes. I'm going to try to tackle something that uh, I think um, I think I needed to hear, uh, and and I know just just observing conversation, especially on social media, as some of you are watching this, you also need to hear. In specific, those that are confessing to follow Jesus. Uh, we see one of the greatest divisions happening right now within our churches, and especially on social media, and the words that are being used, and the boldness that's created when one person can type something on a keyboard and not have to suffer any consequences they believe. Things that they would type on a keyboard or through their phone, but yet never say in person or never want to deal directly with the person or persons that they are directly speaking to. Romans chapter 12 gives us a great guideline. It says things in verse 14, bless those who persecute you. Boy, isn't that a cultural contrast to what we see right now? And again, those that were persecuting them, they were persecuting them because of their faith. Their faith. Their faith, they were being persecuted, and, and Paul's response to them, and it's, it, it's parallel to Jesus' response as well, to bless them. And then he goes on and gets deeper. He says, bless them, but do not even curse them. So, so you can't bless them on one side of your mouth and then, and then curse them on the other. He says, rejoice with those who rejoice, weep with those who weep, live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Never be wise in your own sight. <laughs> there's been a massive pursuit to, to self-glorify your own wisdom during this time that you know best and your brothers and sisters are, are, are dumb or stupid or whatever words that I see people using. And these are believers, right? It says, repay no one evil for evil, but give thought to do what is honorable in the sight of all. So even as evil as being, maybe uh, it, we're experiencing it, maybe it's being portrayed to us, we believe we don't get to repay that evil for evil. And then verse 18, which is key, and I want you to hear this. If possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. And look, there is a lot, a lot of possibility to live at peace with one another. A lot of the peace within the body of Christ, all of the peace really, <laughs> uh, rest on the believer, right, that is wanting and desiring peace with one another. And that's really saying cultivate peace with one another. Peace doesn't just happen. It takes cultivation. It takes work. It takes effort, effort that we need to do. But in order to do that effort, we have to lay down that we want to be right. We have to be lowly. That's the problem that I see is everybody wants to be right. Everybody's opinion is the best. And anybody that disagrees with them, all right, is not as smart, not as intelligent, seeing this wrong. And we attack them. And this is the body of Christ. Says as much as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. That is including those that are persecuting you. Now, he understands that there's a line where peace isn't going to happen. As we are being killed, as we are being, we have martyrs all around the globe. There's a peace, but, but, but I believe that we have caused a lot of the division within our church because of our mouths and because of the words that we like to type through social media. He continues and he says, beloved, never avenge yourself. Leave it to the wrath of God. He says, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. To the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If your enemy is thirsty, give him a drink. And then famous verse that we read often during this time of year is re, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Are we being tools for peace, gospel-centered peace, or are we being tools to divide and cause evil? I pray that this encourages you to evaluate as it did me, what you share, how you share it. I'm not asking for there to be no conflict. I'm not asking for silence of differences. I'm asking how we treat one another matters and it is a direct reflection to our view of God and our response to his word, which is our first order of obedience. So I love you. I'm praying for you, especially during this time. I look forward to seeing you and celebrating with you soon. God bless.